Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are in another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. Well, good morning, Bill. And how are you this morning, Peter? I'm actually doing well. Yeah? Yeah. What makes that happen? I did this thing called sleep. Oh. <laughs> we okay. had a long day yesterday. It was a very interesting day. We had a long week. We did a long... <laughs> My mother says, are you going to be around? Uh, you have a busy day? She says, I have a busy four, four days. I'll see you Monday. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Tired. Yeah. Yeah. But that's okay. So we're at episode number 169. There's two things I would like to talk about. Yes. So I'd like to tip my hat to you, Mr. Peter. Yes. I've been thinking for days now, days, <laughs> and I have not communicated this to you, <laughs> that when we get to episode number 200, uh -huh. we should change the music on the intro and exit of oh, the podcast. Oh, okay. I think we changed it at 100. I have to have Emma check it, but I think it was around 100 we changed it, and I think we should change it like every 100 yeah. podcasts, we should have a new theme. A well, new I only so, made one, didn't I? So That's right. The first one was the one from Money from Pink Floyd. Oh, that's right. We just right. we borrowed that one. Then I made the one and then, for, and, and that's been they, going. They claimed that there was some legal issues, but it wasn't a problem. There was no legal issues. It was just no, because we weren't making of, money on it. One of the guys, one of my internet, one of my inter internet guys, was like giving me a hard time. So, hmm. uh, but he's gone. I'm still here, and it's all legal. So there you go. Yeah. Um, and the other thing. Oh, is, wait, wait a minute. Back up. I didn't get my royalties yet. Oh, they're in the, checks in the mail. <laughs> huh? So the other the other thing is is that uh, I, I I have to tell you uh, let me let me give you the subject line of today's podcast and then I'll tell you the second thing okay it's not about Italians is it no the <laughs> the insider secrets on how we do subject to deal structuring so before I start I know I've done this before but I am going to do this steadfast today. I want reviews. What we are going to do on this podcast, I don't know. I have I've combed the internet. I've typed in all kinds of things into into Mr. Google <laughs> yeah. and I have not found anything as extensive as what we are going to do today. Wow. So I want reviews. If I don't get a shit ton of reviews We're coming to your house. Nope, I'm taking the podcast down. That's it. Just like that. I got if, a, I don't, if I don't Bill, get a bunch of reviews, I, I promise you, I will take the podcast down. This episode, I will take it down, and you won't hear it. I got other things we could be doing. So right? that's a threat. Okay. <laughs> that's a threat. Consider it a threat. And for those people that are first time listening, you're probably saying, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> click. <laughs> Let me, yeah, <laughs> click. exactly. <laughs> well, click, so, yeah. What, what, so what we'll come happens? back to that. <laughs> so episode number 169, the insider secret on how we do subject to deal structuring. Once you give yourself permission, and I mean that, we're going to talk about this. Once you give yourself permission to have this powerful yet very, very misunderstood way of acquiring property, you will soon realize the perceived, it's just perceived, it's not real, unpopular strategy will perform miracles for your financial future. That's no lie. Those are very crafted words. Mm-hmm. In this podcast, I expect to help you shake off any confusions and distractions so that you can shed all of your doubts and bad advice, and you get a lot of bad advice. You should see it all over the internet. Oh, my God. And bad advice on taking over a deed while leaving the loan in your seller's name. As in any industry, there are certain strategies involved with buying and selling anything, mm. right? Mm -hmm. That lead to the most beneficial outcomes. However, before you can apply these tricks of the trade, you know, in quotes, you are about to, uh, you have to have, or you have to be confident in your own mind how they work. Mm. Correct? Sure. For that reason, along with uh, this strategy being the most hidden in America, which I will explain, all right, is why 
we are going to unfold it right in front of your eyes so you can have a perfect 2020 vision of it and start using this amazing knowledge tomorrow. Okay. And you know me, mm -hmm. once I write a description, I fully deliver. <laughs> so we have a lot to cover. I, I, I'm going to put a disclosure here. I want reviews because what I'm going to cover here should not be covered on a podcast. It should really be in a course. It is in one of my courses. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm going to cover it because I've had some uh, questions about it, a lot of questions about it recently. Uh, and number two, um, you should listen to this podcast a couple times and you should definitely take notes. So, uh, in fact, uh, if you're listening to this podcast now uh, and it's live, you should probably grab some paper and pencil because I'm going to actually give you some scripts mm. and I'm going to give you a few things that uh, you should write down. So, you should definitely take notes on this because I'm going to cover a lot. Okay. So, first thing I want to do is I want to describe what subject two means. All right. So, sure. it's slang. All right. The real name is, uh, it, it, it's really known as getting the deed. Mm-hmm. So here's what happens. Um, actually, uh, actually, let me let me just do this next thing before I explain that because I, I'm going to follow my notes instead of just going off on a tangent here. So, so on this podcast, what I'm going to cover today is I'm going to explain how the deal works, mm -hmm. what the deal is, how it works. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to do some math so you can get some uh, reality or, or some visual on how, how you would use it and what's best. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you kind of break... You could break the formula, which I've done, and you could buy houses, but you'll find out later that you shouldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's usually what the internet squawkers are talking about. Oh, you know? oh okay. Because they don't have a formula. Oh, okay. sure. Of course. You know, you have to, you know, the things are like this. Somebody comes up with it or somebody formulates it. There's, there's, there isn't one person who sat in some big building someplace or a big university and just wrote how it all works out. Right. People develop these things over years and find better ways, worse ways, the right way, a few ways, and we wind up with the best way to do it. Right. So, so follow rules. So as far as I know, and, I, and this could just be because I haven't done enough research, but as far as I know, I'm the only one that has a formula for subject two. Hmm. I'm the only one. I've not yeah. met anybody else or heard of anybody else or saw anybody that has a formula. So we're going to share that. And then uh, then in the end, I'm going to cover uh, some of the common objections that I hear sure. you know, from sellers, mostly from investors, because mm -hmm. what I said in the beginning is, believe it or not, my hardest, my hardest obstacle is uh, giving yourself permission to do this. Mm hmm because a lot of people don't give themselves permission because they're they're right away thinking I would never do that. Well, that's because they haven't had the presentation and they don't know what's involved and the risk is perceived. Because mm -hmm. believe it or not, out of all the strategies I use, this is the the least risk free. Hmm. I'm sorry, the re least risk involved. Right. Right. It's risk free. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go back. So what is subject to? Or getting the deed. So simply what means is, is what it means in simple one sentence explanation. It means that the seller passes the deed without the loan. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, so right. the seller passes the deed without the loan. So if you sell me the house, you have a mortgage. I get the deed. You still have the mortgage. Right. And so, you think, who crazy enough to do that? Right. So in the car business... Okay, in the car uh -huh. business, there's a title for a car. Yes. Okay, and if you have a loan on that car, it's on the title. It's written on the title. Right. So when I pass a title to you, mm -hmm. it says there's a lien on the car. Right. So I can't pass a clean title unless I have a certified letter from the 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 the, the lending. Lender. Yeah, the lender. Yeah. Um, that says it's paid off. Now, do you? Uh, I, my, 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 I'm, you know better than me. I thought you didn't get the title in full. You actually get the title until the loan on the car is paid yeah, off. And nowadays, that's that, I think that's right? the way it is. Yeah, because I remember but, waiting to pay the the loan off. Oh, I got the title now. Before, what would happen is you would get the title, and there would be lien holder information on it. Okay. So now it depends on what state you live in, but that that's usually what okay. happens. The point is, is this: <coughs> you can hide a car. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, you can hide a car. <coughs> You're not hiding a house. It's not moving. 
Oh, I mean, if you could physically hide, physically hide a yeah, car. Yeah, you can okay. hide a car. But you still can't sell it because the title would say there's a lien. Right. Okay. So, so, the, so the lien mm-hmm. goes with the title. Mm-hmm. In real estate, that's not true. The lien, the lien uh, doesn't go with the title. It stays with the house, not the title. So right. let me explain that. So yep. what happens is when you write, when somebody borrows money for a mortgage, there's a note written. Mm-hmm. N-O-T-E, a note, mm-hmm. okay? That note clarifies all the money in the deal. So it clar- clarifies how much money was borrowed. It clarifies how long it's been borrowed for. It clarifies the interest. It clarifies the payments when they're due. Mm-hmm. It clarifies the default. It clarifies the whole transaction right. in writing. Every usually penalty, everything that happens. They're usually four or five pages long. Sure. Okay. It's not too hard to do. They're pretty common. Unfortunately, the note is only as good as the paper it's written on. So what happens is when people write notes, they want collateral. Mm-hmm. So, in other words, they want the house as collateral. So, if you don't pay for the note, I want the house back. Mm -hmm. So, that device is called a mortgage. So, the mortgage connects the note to the property. People think the mortgage is the loan, huh? Right. And And they they, And they say that, oh, I got a mortgage on my house, meaning I got a loan on my house. It's not technically correct. No. They have a note on their house attached with a mortgage. Yeah. Okay. So, you have a note is one device or one piece of paper or mm-hmm. one document. Mm-hmm. And then you have a mortgage that connects that note to the property, which now makes the note worthwhile because there's collateral now. Sure. So if I don't pay, okay, what happens is is the, the mortgage company or the lender mm-hmm. <coughs> has to go to court and sue to get the title back. Right. Because... What happens is is the the mortgage document says that I'm sorry I'm going to back up. So the deed says that the owner owns the house, mm-hmm. and there's a device called a mortgage that connects it to the note. But legally, this the the owner of the deed owns the house. So mm-hmm. for so for the for the lender to get the deed back. Okay. Yeah. They have to sue so that there's not equity stripping because suppose suppose I suppose I lent you a, I, I just did a deal with a coaching client. Mm-hmm. And they're buying a $300,000 house for 200,000. Owners doing owner financing, they put $100,000 down, which mm-hmm. by the way the owner gave to them because there's two partners. Oh. So one partner paid. So it's kind of kind of unique. Huh. Point is is this. If the lender he owes the lender two hundred grand. Yeah, house is worth three hundred grand. Uh huh. So if he put down his hundred thousand dollars and then was late on his payment for four days, mm-hmm. if there were not these laws, what would happen is is the lender would say, "Well, give me the house back," and he's a hundred thousand dollars more more gained. Yeah, he's richer. Yeah, and the guy put hundred thousand gets nothing back. So that's why these laws are there. So if if because the equity, because it's you don't want equity stripping going on, because lenders were doing equity stripping because mm-hmm. they were making you know the guys with the gold makes the rules. Yeah. Well, they changed that. So you know this is years ago. You know. So and we, well now, so now so they, they have to sue for the deed. Right. So nowadays, if somebody has a two hundred thousand dollar house and they owe fifty thousand dollars and they're late on the mortgage and they can't pay, they get foreclosed. That's the foreclosure is the legal process in the court to get the deed back. Right. So, so the lender is suing the seller yeah. to get the deed back. That's called a foreclosure proceeding. Sure. So my question is nowadays, that's how it is. So if somebody owes 50000 on a $200,000 house, doesn't pay, they get foreclosed, the bank takes the entire house back, right? Yep. So they get a $200,000 house that the person only owed 50000 on. Right. Isn't that equity stripping? No, because they go to court and it's yeah. and it's and it's it's like, just unfair. Yeah, because <laughs> you know they wait wait a minute. <clears throat> Can I have my hundred fifty thousand back and you take right. the house? But they get the whole thing. Right. Jeez. Right. Okay. Part of, part of the system, huh? All right. So now that we understand that, mm-hmm. so now what we can do is we could talk about subject two. Okay. 
So if I were to buy a house from you mm-hmm. and you owed one hundred and sixty thousand dollars on a two hundred thousand dollar house, you have this note in place. This note clarifies when you're going to pay, how much interest, the timeline, all that stuff. Right. Right. I am going to take the deed in in my name. All right. Subject to your existing mortgage agreements. Mm. So whatever that note says, I'm going to agree to those terms when I take the deed. Right, because all that's in place. <clears throat> Nothing is changing. Right. So you just keep doing whatever it said. Right. Don't rock the boat. Pay the bill. Right. Okay. So here's what happens. Uh, the way we do this, and we're going to talk about this uh all right, so, so do you understand that? Sure. We'll, we'll get to that when it's sure. time, right? So so what happens is is you say, yes, I will sell you the house. I will give you the deed, okay? And the mortgage is going to stay in your name. Mm-hmm. Now, by the time we get done with this podcast, I, I could feel the, the hair standing on the back of somebody's neck right Who now. Who would do that? By the and- time we get done with this podcast, I, I will assure you with uh, so much certainty on this is the safest deal for you to be doing and for the seller to be doing that you will that you will want to give me a review. You'll want to give me two reviews. Okay. <laughs> I want reviews. I want payback for this, Peter. I want payback. All right. All right. So so does that make sense? Yeah. What I've sure. just explained. Sure. I okay. mean I mean technically yes. Reason why, emotion wise, keep going, explaining. Right. Okay, yeah. Good. Why would so, happen? So well, let's go would, through right it from the beginning. Okay. So let's go through it right from the beginning. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of like go through a deal in my head, like the sequence of how things would happen. Like a scenario? No, just a sequence of how things will happen. Okay. Okay. I mean, we'll we'll give examples, but so the first thing is is when you're when you're deal hunting, how do you recognize one of these deals? Right. Okay. So that's the first thing. So the biggest way to spot this deal is to ask the seller if they would sell the house for what they owe on it. Mm. Now, in your particular case, if it's a hundred fifty thousand dollar, I mean a two hundred thousand dollar house, and they owe fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, don't ask that question. <laughs> no. So you tend to like to ask if there's more than an eighty percent loan to value or less than you know. Uh, how do we get this? Right? Well, if the loan to value is about, if the mortgage is about eighty percent the value of the house. Right. So let's do it easier. So if there's 20% of equity or less, mm-hmm. you'll ask that question. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that, that means you need you need math while you're talking to the person. Yeah. So my suggestion is this. <clears throat> know what the, the average medium in your, in your neighborhood or in your area is, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then do the math before you start talking to people. Mm-hmm. We use 35000 Right. Average price of our houses are two hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. If if and I actually learned that from Ron Legrand years ago. Yeah, you know thirty five thousand dollars. If there's thirty five thousand dollars worth of equity or less, mm-hmm. you ask that question. Right. Would you be willing to sell the house for what you owe on it? And then stop talking. <laughs> Let the phone go <laughs> silent because there will be a a moment of silence. Like duh. It could be anywhere from five seconds to five minutes. Which means they're thinking about it. Yes. Or they go, no. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, but ask that question. You will be floored at the answers you get. Yeah. But just ask that question. So if in in my world, if it's a two hundred thousand dollar house mm-hmm. and they and they owe and there's about thirty five thousand dollars or less of equity, mm-hmm. Okay, because you're going to ask them that, and the when you're you say, asking questions, how much do you owe on your mortgage? So right. if it's like, oh, it's a two hundred thousand dollar house, and how much later, a couple of minutes later, how much do you owe? Oh, about one hundred sixty five. Uh, there it is. Right, that's the ballpark. And with that in mind, if it's a hundred thousand dollar house, you could adjust the number lower. Yes. Or a seven hundred thousand dollar house, right. you could adjust lower. Yes. Yeah, so you could do that. Yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes okay. because that that's just my rules. I'm the only one that has these rules. There's, yeah. There are a lot of others that don't have these rules, which is why subject two gets a bad name. Yeah. And I'm gonna explain that to you at the end of the show or towards the end of the show why it gets a bad name. You know, I know that bigger pockets is that they're great guys over there. They do a lot for the community. Uh, but I know that I don't know their names. Turner is his last name. I don't know his first name. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've listened to you know. I used to listen to them all the time. It's not Apple, is it? Apple Turner? No, uh, I forgot his first name. Anyways, mm. uh, he's he's written a few books, and 
I know that he's not always keen about subject two, but honestly, I think it's because not that he doesn't understand. I, I just don't know that they have formulas. That's what it really comes well, down to. You've taught me a couple of things. If if you've never done a deal, you ain't going to like it. Right. You know, if you do rehabs, if you do lease options, if you do rentals and you're doing great with that, somebody says, how about that? You go, nah, I don't want to do that because right. you've never done it. You don't understand it. You won't waste your time learning about it. Right. You don't need it, you think. But you walk in a house where no deal works that you offer, nothing works, and that's sitting there as a possible, and you can buy the house that way, why lose a deal? Right. So that's why we don't lose many deals. Right. You don't get them all, but anyways, all my them. point was is that when I went on to their on to Bigger Pockets uh, Q and A, you know, question and answer mm-hmm. forum about subject two, there was a lot of confusion. Wow! And the the answers were from other students that didn't understand. Okay, so it, it's really, I mean, it's really the most misunderstood real estate transaction that I've ever ever uh, mm-hmm. encountered. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, good. Doesn't seem that hard when you do it though, because I did at least one with you. Well, it's because I've done so many of them. It's yeah. like simple science. Just do this, do that. Yeah. All right. So the biggest way to spot one of these deals is if you ask the seller, "We you sell the house for what you owe on it?" And we just talked about that as long as it's within that twenty percent realm, thereabouts. Yeah. For us, it's a thirty-five thousand dollar number. Right. Okay. Now, I personally have done. That question with much larger spreads, mm-hmm. but that's me. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I've, I've been on the phone a lot. I've been with a lot of customers, so there are times where I'll like joke about it, and I'll like I'll come through the back door with the question instead mm-hmm. of the front door. Yeah. So I've gotten away with it, but it's definitely very tactful. Yeah. I do not suggest you do that in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So the trick here is is to make sure the equity is just not too large. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can I make a point too, just for with some real newbies if they're not thinking it through? If you have a two hundred thousand dollar house, the person selling it, how much does he actually get when he sells it? If right. he were to sell it with a realtor and all that, you do all the closing costs, the, the negotiating, the inspections, you do all that stuff, the lawyers, the closing, everything, and twenty thousand comes off, twenty five thousand comes off that. 30000 comes off debt. Yeah, so go listen to episode number 90, uh, dealing with the real estate mob or mm-hmm. something like that. I forgot. The mafia. Yeah. And we explain all that stuff there. Yeah. It's a full podcast on 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 that. So just in case you're worried, how, how could you take that much off? That much comes off in the sale. Right. So you're about where you'd be anyways, within a few bucks. Right. So you're not asking for somebody impossible. The seller doesn't know that, though. So if you if he's anywhere right. near, you can totally explain it to him. And right. he go, oh, I didn't realize that. And then you're then you're close on a deal. Then you can work it out a little bit. All right. So uh, I'm going to give you a script. I use it personally. Okay. This is not anywhere in any of my materials, unless you're in my office or have maybe listened to one of my uh, recordings, which is mostly for my coaching clients because I record myself. And, and give it to my coaching clients. So when I'm on the phone or when I'm in the house, uh, often those recordings go to my coaching clients. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what they pay for. It's one mm-hmm. of the things they pay for, right? In fact, it's a handwritten <laughs> yellow notepad, right? You've seen it, yep. right? And it's in the folder that I keep my deals in. In other words, the deals I'm calling on or, or doing follow-up on, I have a, I have a couple scripts in there, uh, one of which is the FISBO script. Mm-hmm. The other is this yellow pad that I have, and then there's a few other scripts that I use, like on lease options and stuff. I haven't those those I haven't read, but the subject two, I still read it. Yeah, it's worded very well. I this assume. this this I'm I'm going to give it to you right now. Yeah. I still read it. Yeah. Okay, because I I'm not for some reason it's it, it's very the word crafting is very articulate and it's and it works. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still read it. Yeah. Okay. So, I've never given it to anybody in public before. So this is the only the only time I will probably ever do it. But I'm going to do it right now. So, and I'm just going to read it once, and then we're going to carry on. You have to go back and write it. You have to write it down. You have to whatever you got to do because this is, this is it. This is my one shot. I should not be doing this. Mm. This should really be in the. I think it's it should be in the how to buy real estate without a loan course. And it's not. 
because mm-hmm. it's something I've developed since I've done that course. Mm-hmm. And I just get amazing results. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use the seller's name. Yeah. So if you were my seller, I would say, here we go. You ready? Go for it. P. Uh, yeah. It looks like uh, I can buy your house. Oh, really? But the only way I can buy it is to take over your debt. That means that the loan stays in your name, but I will make all the payments on it when you and I agree to start. Hmm. And sooner or later, I'll get it paid off. Hmm. Will that keep you awake at night? So then there would be an answer of yes or no. Mm -hmm. If they say no, listen to me carefully. Mm -hmm. Listen to me carefully. (laughs) Write this down. Please make sure you get this part. If they say no, it will not keep them awake at night. You say to them, what are you doing right now? I want to come to the house. (laughs) Yeah. There's, you there's, do not there's put two things, time. There's two things that make Bill do this. Your house is free and clear. Click. Yeah. Z- I'm on my way. The engine starts. And the Cigars the lit. The, he's, he's still on the phone in the car like, and what's your address? Yeah. And Pete, put this in the GPS. Or when they say, after they say, will that keep you awake at night? And they say, no, I'm in the car going. Mm. You do not put any time between that phone, as little time as possible. You get out there as soon as possible and look at the house and do a deal. Before they can scare themselves. Just do it. There's a bunch of people. We're going to have a whole podcast on why you got to do that. Just do it. So the question is, is will that keep, will this keep you awake at night? No. So they say no. If they say yes, in other words, they don't like the idea. Yeah. Here's what you say. Well, let's go to plan B. <laughs> How about I lease option or rent to own? That's yeah. what pe- most people know it as. Rent to own the property from you. I'll pay you rent and then you could take that money and pay your mortgage. Plus, I will do all the maintenance and all the work that's needed on the house as if I own it. What do you think? Yeah, them's the words. Okay. Those aren't just tossed off. I know you. I know those words. Okay. Now let's explain what's going on here. Mm. Okay, because now I'm going to pretend like they said no, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't keep them awake at night. Right. And we're going out to the house. But here's first a stu- thing. First he- thing you got to do is you got to have a six ring gauge cigar. <laughs> Big old that, fat. That puppy. means the size. Six, yeah. Like six ring six gauge. Rings, is like a ring. I like Maduros. They're pretty strong. Okay, mm. Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan <whistles> tobacco. Yeah. Those are my favorites. Wow. So when you get in the car, light it up. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get to the house, you're going to go through the house. You're going to look at the house. Yeah. Right? And here's what you're going to do. You're going to explain to the owner that the house is going to stay in your name and the mortgage is going to remain in their name. So they're going to pass the deed without the mortgage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Say that first part again. Which part? The the loan the, the deed stays in my name. It stays in your name. And the okay. loan remains in their name. Yeah. So they're gonna pass the deed without the loan. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna reassure them and this is a whole conversation. This is not gonna happen like I'm saying it right now. This these are they just don't go, highlights. Oh sure, that's fine. So, have to explain gonna, as we go through the podcast, we're gonna keep you're gonna keep getting more information on how this would work. Okay. Yeah. So What's going to happen is there's actually six documents that we need that they're going to sign. Two of them are notarized. One of them is a deed. Mm. Okay. Now, before I get any support tickets about my documents, there are three places you can get my documents. One we have not released yet. It's done. Emma's done all the work. Emma's actually got three products ready to be released right now, and she's waiting for me to write sales letters, and I'm too busy doing whatever to write the damn sales letters. One of them is is we actually have a product. It's a few thousand dollars, so don't think that you're going to go get it for cheap money. Well, we actually took all my documents and put them in one product. Now, it is a few thousand dollars. But you are going to be able to have that. So if you're listening to this and you want subject to documents, the six documents I'm talking about, they're a few grand. 
because you get those and everything else I have. So when you send me a support ticket, I'll send you a link and you can go buy them. Okay, I've never done this before. Mm. This is brand new. No, people ask all the time. Gee, I need documents. I don't have the right. If you, you don't have the right documents, <clears throat> you can't do the deals. I was looking for them. So this is like a great. What thing has to have. happened up until this point is, is I only release the documents to my coaching clients. So you have to become, become a monthly, monthly coaching client. Some people don't want the coaching; they just want the documents. Mm -hmm. So now you can buy them. Yep. Okay. So you have to send me a support ticket. I will send you a link. The sales page is kind of it's written and done. I just don't like the colors and shit. And Emma and I have to sit down and. She has to satisfy my weirdness. So that's what, it's, but the sales page is written. Everything's there, but it's just not live. Mm. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you want that, I will send you the ugly sales page, as I call it. Emma says rude, right? But that's how it is. Okay. So the point is, is you need six documents. Once you have these six documents, you can completely own the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. That's it. No lawyer involved. That's it. Mm. Why okay. don't you need a lawyer on this one? Why would you? Well, I don't know. You do them on other, some other type of deals. Well, the you main reason is, is the bank's not involved. Oh. There's no loan. Yeah. The banks are the one requiring a lawyer. Or yeah. the, and, and, and you're saying, why don't you need a lawyer? The reason why I hesitated is because, because first of all, in Connecticut, we're a judicial state, so we close with lawyers. Yeah. There are many people listening to this podcast that don't need, that ever use a lawyer. They use escrow agents because mm -hmm. they don't need lawyers. Yeah, but it's not a closing, and there's no loan moving back and forth. Well, I mean, there's no bank involved. So there is a closing because the definition of a closing is oh, is the deed, deed passes. Deed That's passes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, no offense to escrow companies, but from what I understand, most escrow companies are run from people that make fifteen dollars an hour. And no offense to fifteen dollar an hour people, but it's mm -hmm. not a hundred and twenty five dollar an hour lawyer. Yeah. You know, so I mean, do what you want with that data. Or if even if they're making twenty five dollars, it's not a hundred and twenty five dollar mm -hmm. an hour lawyer. Well the point is they're not trained as much as lawyers data wise right. to know what should legally. Should, yeah, to know legally. Right, wrong, should, shouldn't, so you just do it. Right. So I, I'm not like I, I don't mean to disrespect the title clerk or anything like no, that. It's just it's, my point is, is here we have to pay a minute. You know, they charge one hundred twenty-five dollars an hour and and up. And no. some lawyers are two, three hundred dollars. No, it's a matter of the training because I got this on some um, something I was reading the other day that you have some lawyers that work for big financial guys, big guys in big banks that have very expensive lawyers who override and completely overwhelm little paid government lawyers who are trying to right. figure out from our end what's right or wrong financially and guess who wins right you wonder what's wrong with the economy right. so you have these big paid smart and it's not the money it's the knowledge and the, the tricks in their bag and the tools they have just overwhelms a guy right big tool bag little tool bag okay so here, here's what's going to happen and and i'm trying to figure out where i'm going to put this in Okay, so here, let me explain the details of the deal, and then we're going to review it again once we get to the objections later. Mm -hmm. okay? So here's the magic. This is actually done with politicians, which is why we don't know about it, because most politicians acquire their property the way I'm going to explain to you right now. Mm. And it's kind of like above the law. There's a loophole in the law. Mm. And I'm gonna I'm gonna explain to you what that is. Okay, so the deed does two things. It transfers ownership, and it develops a trust. So my deed, which is a page and a half long, once the seller signs it, it does two things. One, it develops a trust, and two, it transfers ownership. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is not uh, this is not the word trust brings up a whole bunch of confusion and I'm going to tell you right now point blank that you are not you are not you are not don't think you are going to find an attorney that understands this. Mm -hmm. You need to train your attorney. I don't care who he is or your closing agent. You are not going to find somebody unless you unless he's my attorney that I've already trained, or he's done specific deals the way we're talking about using the paperwork that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You are not, which is why when you go on bigger pockets and these other places, there's so much trouble because they're not using these specific documents and they're not structuring the deal correctly. Mm 
mm-hmm. because they don't understand it. Because trusts are very, very widespread. But the concept, I just want you to get right now. Mm-hmm. These trusts are very specific because they're called land trusts. Okay? Mm-hmm. They're specific to the property, not a person. Right. So they're specific to the uh, Schedule A of the property. So Schedule A is the language where they say, you know, this property is 100 feet from this border and 200 feet from that border. And they they go around the borders and there's a legal description called a Schedule A Mm -hmm. for the property, which which is engineer talk of when they when they did the maps for the original piece of property boundaries. Mm-hmm. So it's like survey talk, you know, s- survey uh, land surveyors. Sure. Right? So the, the land description is that description. Right. So the trust is going to have that, is going to have that as its trust. So the property trust or the land trust is specific to that language. Right. That's right. describing what you own. Right. You know, in their jargon, it's at the town hall is recorded. That's how they describe it. So what legally. I do is when I do my title search, which is the first thing you do once somebody signs all these, the six documents I'm talking about. Once they sign the six documents, I go do a title search. I tell my seller that we're going to do a title search. It's going to take five business days. Once I get the okay, then we can do our deal. Yeah. Okay. In that, in that, title search, there's going to be a Schedule A. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just simply photocopy that Schedule A, and I'm going to attach it to my deed mm-hmm. when I file this deed. Okay? Now, here's what happens, and here's the glorious part of trusts, which is why we do it this way. A trust, by law, only has to file the trustee's name. Okay, so in a trust, there's a beneficiary, which is the owner of the trust. Mm -hmm. And then there's the trustee, which is kind of like the secretary. Right. Okay, so the trustee files the trust in the trustee's name. So like, suppose I I bought the piece of property and you are the trustee. It would say your name as trustee. Yeah. The way my trust declate declarate dec relation am I saying that wrong? Declaration? Declaration, yes, uh-huh. thank you. Uh-huh. Is written <clears throat> is I do not need you to f- hire you or fire you. There's a specific form, which is really just two or three sentences that mm-hmm. say, I no longer want Peter to be my trustee. I want Emma to be my trustee. And you're saying the trustee's more like a secretary. I always thought it was like more like the boss. Because he's no. the trustee, like it's not that much. He's know? a secretary. Yeah. In the declaration that I have, what happens is, is it also says that the beneficiary doesn't do the paperwork. They don't sign anything. Mm. You want to know why? Yes. Because then he would he would be exposed. Right. Okay. He'd be liable more. He would be exposed. No, not liable. He would be exposed. exposed. Right. Yeah. So. What happens is, is the trustee is the one that signs all the documents per instruction of mm-hmm. the beneficiary. Mm-hmm. Okay. And although he's exposed because he's visible. Right. He's just a secretary. Right. So suppose somebody comes along and wants to hit you as the trustee, which can't happen, by the way. I'll explain that in a minute. Mm-hmm. Worst case scenario is, is I fire you and hire Emma. Mm. You're no longer the trustee of the property. Yeah. He's trying to get the property, though, right? And all, all he can see is the trustee? Who's trying to get the property? Well, if, the, if somebody's trying to hit the trustee, is it against the trustee specifically, or is it because of the property he's trying to get at? I don't or know who it, you're talking about. You mean the attacker? Yeah, the attacker. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, could be, it could be either. Usually there's a problem with the property. Who owns this property? I got to have a lien okay, against so it or something. So let's clarify something right now. So yeah. the deed says that Peter's the trustee of my property. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is not filed is the de- the trust. Let me do this. What is not filed is the trust declaration that clarifies who's who. Like who's the beneficiary? 
And that is the law that I've just, uh, what I just told you is literally a multi, multi, multi million dollar strategy. Mm. If you understand this and you agree with this and you're not going to go to your lawyer and say, this is what Bill said. Is he right? Because he's not going to understand it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the only way you're going to fully understand it is to read the documents. Okay. So if somebody has the documents and then takes it, to the lawyer. Or he'll understand it. And then he'll go, I, he'll be, will he be surprised a little bit at first? Possibly. Mine was. Yeah. I, I have to train every lawyer I get with trust. But me. when they look at it, they don't say, no, that won't work because it's, right. it's correct. So 100%. He'll, go, he'll go like, geez, that would work. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a land trust. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, so what happens is, is when you're passing the deed, you're also putting it into a trust. Mm -hmm. Now, there are very specific laws with trusts. Okay. One of them is, is you can't attach them. You can't attach them. Meaning you liens. Say attach, liens. Attach them with a lien. You can't attach them. Yeah. Right. So, so there's the other is you can't sue them. Mm. Right. The other is, is you can't expose them. Mm -hmm. Now, could an attorney subpoena the trustee for the doc, for the declaration? Absolutely. Could they penetrate it? A good attorney would, but it's going to be harder to do. Now, what I do is, is and this is very, I, I haven't done this in a few years because it's not this complicated now, but when my partner and I had a bunch of properties, here's what would happen. I was trustee. He was beneficiary. Actually, his company was beneficiary. Mm -hmm. So as far as equity uh, protection goes, it goes like this. This is the, this is the utmost most dramatic way to do it. In mm -hmm. other words, it, it's overdoing it, I think. Like several levels of protection. Right. So what you do is you have a trustee in a trust. Mm -hmm. The beneficiary of that trust is an LLC, which is the management company mm. of the property. Right. Okay. So, so that LLC is the management company that works for the original LLC that owns the property. Oh, geez. So I call it. All right. So there's an LLC that manages it, owned by the LLC that bought it. Right. Which then where's the where's the person now? The person's behind that. Yeah. The, the human being is behind that. Yeah. Wow. So if you look at that paper trail, what happens is, is you got to penetrate the trust mm -hmm. and then you got to penetrate the management LLC. And then you got to penetrate the actual LLC that owns the property. Now, if you do this mechanically, what happens is the management company has the checkbook. Yeah. So the so what you do is you open two checking accounts, one for the management company mm -hmm. and one for the actual trust, uh, the actual LLC that owns the property. Yeah. So what we do is we don't have a checkbook for the property that owns the property, uh, the LLC that owns the property. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you transfer money online because you can do that now. Back in the day, so we wait, can do you, that. So you don't have a checkbook for it. You don't have a checkbook for the property that owns oh, you, you have the an, LLC that owns the property. You have an account. I have a checking account. Right, without because, the checking, without the paper. Because it has to have the LLC. I have to be able to, to deposit to it. Sure. That company transfers the money into the management company, and then the management company disperses everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good way to do it if you have multiple properties that own, you know, multiple LLCs that own single properties. Yeah. Right. So you could have five LLCs own five properties and the management company does all the check writing. Right. So you have one checkbook, you have one set of books, mm -hmm. you have one QuickBooks and everything's done that way. And then, and then the LLCs, you just pay the fees each month and that's just called equity protection. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. That was a side note that I don't even have notes written on that. So yeah, that's Jeez. just that's just a way to. That's do fancy it. business. Yeah. Okay. Now, so the trust document. So what happens is, is when you're when you're when you sign the deed, you're signing a a, a trust. You're developing a trust. Yep. Okay. And you're also creating uh, the deed of transfer. Mm hmm. Okay. Now. When I fill out my deeds, and I'm going to tell you this is this is worth, I don't know how much money, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're going to do business. When I fill out my deed, I fill out my deed that says I'm buying the property for $1 and other valuable consideration. Or $1 and other consideration. I like valuable consideration because I like to think that it's valuable. Okay? Yeah, and not some weird thing. 
What happens now is when you go to the town hall and you file the deed, that deed of trust, mm-hmm. okay, because it's less than $2,000, you don't have to pay convenience tax, hmm. number one, mm-hmm. okay? I probably have the IRS coming after me now. <laughs> it's legal, so there's no, I'm not worried about saying it over the air, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing is, is that the trust is 100% IRS transparent. So you don't have to file separate documents for the trust. It's just transparent. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if the LLC owns, you know, either the management company, the LLC, you just file those documents and it doesn't, the trust is transparent. Mm-hmm. Okay. So whatever happens in the trust it, it just it just goes through and it's fine. Yeah. Which is another law of trusts. Mm. So going back to the laws, you can't you can't attach one, mm-hmm. you can't sue one, and they're IRS transparent. Right. So who would who would make a device so wonderful, but a politician? Right. And you know, the rich guys make the rules. So why don't you follow them? Mm-hmm. Right. I'm s- seriously. And not to be not to be a pig about it, but just to do it in a way that keeps you from from pigs, right? You know, and you'd be surprised when when you have a little bit of money, people go, "Oh, he has money." I've had people attack me already. I don't even have any. They think I have uh, money or something. Right. You know, I'm not this big fat rich guy with a fat cigar. You got the cigar. I got the cigar. Yeah, but so rich. but you have to protect things because uh, you know people are there's people out there that will do that, right? You know, so let's carry on. Okay, because there's more to come, but I'm like kind of instead of just like going blah 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 blah, blah and then you have to rewind it a hundred times. I'm trying to do it in pieces so that it kind of goes together. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. So let's talk about the math now. Yep. Now, one of the things that I say, and it's only me because, like I said, I've not heard anybody else use this formula, is the loan to value ratio, which simply means what's owed on the property to how much it's being sold for is the equity or the loan to value ratio. So if you if you have a hundred thousand house that's that you're paying that's worth a hundred thousand dollars and they owe eighty, you mm-hmm. take eighty thousand, type eight zero 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 into the calculator, and then hit the divide button and hit one hundred thousand and hit equals, it comes out to eighty percent. Sure. That is the loan to value ratio. In other words, the encumbrances, and encumbrance means barrier or block mm-hmm. or something holding it back. Mm-hmm. That's an encumbrance, mm-hmm. right? In real estate, that means before you can pass a deed free and clear, the encumbrances, which is usually a loan to be paid off or liens mm-hmm. or tax problems or right. water bills or IRS or all these are encumbrances. They would stop the sale. They would no. They would stop the deed from being passed free and clear. Right. Okay? Now you gotta get what I just said. Cause this is huge. You gotta get what I just said. Because you are buying the you are getting the deed what? Subject to. Right. Subject, subject to, to what? The conditions in it's the loan. It's not just the mortgage. What happens if there was there were water liens on there? Yeah. Well, anything that goes anything that goes the with encumbrances, not just the loan, it's the encumbrances. Yeah. So if there's a four hundred dollar lien on the title mm. for water. You're buying. You're getting the title subject to subject to that lien, because any problem like that is attached to the deed or gets filed against the yes. deed. Yes. Okay. Suppose the taxes are not paid. Yeah. Right. And is that are there questions for me or? Okay. We're on Facebook live live streaming, and I just saw the corner of my eye somebody typing something in there. So does that make sense? Yeah. So we're buying the deed or we're getting the deed subject to not only the loan, but the encumbrances on the property. Right. Which is the reason why you do your title search very Mm. first thing, because you want to make sure that there's not mechanics liens, tax liens, water liens, 
IRS liens I love. Those I could fix. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure that the client, that the, the, the deed is not clouded with all this crap. Or if it is, you're doing your numbers correctly. Right, because your numbers are based on what you consider the value of the property is, how much is owed, and, uh, so, and so what it's normally worth. it's loan to value ratio. That's kind of a misnomer because it's really the encumbrance to value ratio is really what it means. So suppose right. you had suppose you had a hundred thousand dollar house mm -hmm. and you had an eighty thousand dollar mortgage mm -hmm. and a five thousand dollar water lien. Mm. I mean a five thousand dollar tax lien mm -hmm. and a five hundred dollar water lien. Yeah. You're not at eighty thousand dollars anymore. So your loan to value ratio. So the loan is eighty thousand plus right? 50. plus you got five thousand in taxes plus five hundred in water, so you got fifty five hundred. So it's yeah. really supposed to be Encumbrance to 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 value ratio. All with every all all debt, all encumbrance, right. all all. So it's really all liability. It's really in some 80, way. 80, You really owe eighty five five on the property. Yeah. So okay. that's your math. You have to figure is that good now? Is that worth right. it? Because you're taking that on. Right. Oh, I also owe my father ten thousand dollars. He loaned me on the house. Right. Oops. Right. Now the deal goes south. Right. Right. And that happens. Yeah. But okay. if you have all the data, you can know ahead of time and not be surprised with, right. oh, what? So the 20% loan-to-value ratio is really a misnomer. It's really 20% equity. You want to make sure you have 20% equity. Right. So what if uh, it's 80%, uh, there's no liens, but it needs $20,000 of renovation that it has to have because the bathroom isn't even there. You have to take that off too, no? That's right. And he, then, then renovations, if it has to be done, we're talking like a pretty house that you can just move into. You can get a renter in there. Right. But with other problems, like, what do you mean there's no gas line? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We have a house now that there was, there was no heat in. They must have lived upstairs with the electric heater. Yeah. There's no heat. Right. There's so you have line. to put that in. <clears throat> so let me see here. Let me catch up with my notes. Uh Okay. So does that make sense? D did you say what the loan rate, to, uh, loan to value ratio has to be on this yet? So you're looking for to be safe. You're looking for a twenty percent equity position. Mm -hmm. So it's not really because when I teach it, it's like you know it's an eighty percent loan to value ratio. That's not really true because I'm doing that on stage. But when we're we're talking about details now, I'm I'm like further down the scale right now. I'm talking yeah. about like like the so when I'm on stage and I'm and I do my videos, I'm talking about how to do it mm -hmm. or what to do. Now I'm talking about how to do it. That's what it is. More detail. Yeah, more detail. So, so when you do your title search, all these things are going to come up. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, a good position to be in would be twenty percent worth of equity. That's a complete arbitrary number because you could have and I've had students that have done this have 90% only have 10% worth of equity mm -hmm. and still do a subject to deal why would that be well what is the equity per, i mean if it was 100% you have no margin if things go south right like there's right. there's no value left to you so you want to have some value like buy something with something already there some equity already there right. if anything goes screwy so if you have to sell it, you break even at least. You don't lose money. Right. If you if something breaks, you you have to fix it. It's okay. You still have some equity. Right. Just a buffer, right? Right. Okay. Okay. So so if it's ten percent, why when is there a condition? Suppose with it's ten percent in equity, mm -hmm. but I can make a thousand dollars a month in there's, cash there's flow. Good cash flow, yeah. Right, because the mortgage is like, I don't know. It's it's a home equity line with two percent interest. And yeah. all you have to do is pay the two percent. Yeah. Right? Sure. Sure. And all of a sudden your cash flow on a thousand dollars. Well, okay. So, you know, I'm gonna make twelve thousand dollars a year for the next five years. Mm -hmm. Right? So plus plus a little bit of equity. Sixty something thousand dollars plus you got ten percent. So so it, it really depends on the deal structure. So I'm not steadfast on the eighty percent. It's just a rule of thumb. So you want to jockey the equity and the cash flow. Right. Okay. So to like make if the, sure if the cash that, flow, it, that if, it's enough. If the cash flow was bad, would you want a little more equity? Or not do the yeah. deal at all? Yeah. Because yeah. you have to get That's a renter. That's where the 20% comes Because you from. have to get the renter. If the, if the, right. if the, if the mortgage or the encumbrance is really high and the rent is really high, you might not get somebody right. in there. So That's right. As long as you can okay. get someone so, in there. Okay. So does that make sense? Yeah. 
Okay, so with that said, listen to me carefully because I'm kind of like get your pencils out. Yeah, listen to what I'm telling you. Okay, one of the one of the reasons why there's so much noise, and we're going to go over a couple of those in a minute. Okay, is because when these properties are sold, when subject to properties are sold, mm-hmm. okay. They are not sold correctly. And that's why there's so much noise on the internet. Hmm. And here's what I mean by that. The best way to sell a subject to property is with a lease option. The reason why is because the option, so an option is simply an agreement in the future that you can buy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So one of the confusions, and I did this in the meetup last month. So if you're in the ERIUM, you can go into, into September's meetup. And I explain this in great detail. Okay. An option, when you buy an option. So in other words, if you have a house for sale, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And and I want, and you agree to sell it to me for a hundred, uh, for $200,000. Right. Right. I, and you're going to give me two years to pay you. Mm-hmm. That's an option, right? Okay, so you're giving you're you're giving me the right to do that. So when I give you a hundred dollars for the option consideration money, that hundred dollars is actually paying you for the right to be able to sell this house. For two hundred thousand dollars in the next two years, you're selling me the right to sell it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm not buying the house; I'm buying the rights to the house. Mm-hmm. When I put my seller in, I mean my buyer in the house, he's paying me ten thousand dollars for that right. So I bought the rights from you for a hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and I sell it to my buyer for ten thousand. Yep. No one else can buy it. He's got the inside scoop. You got it? Yeah. Because because he's giving me $10,000, it's not a deposit on the house. It's the rights to buy the house. Mm -hmm. So if he defaults, he defaults on his rights. Okay. That's why they lose the money if they walk away. That's why it's a non-refundable deposit. But if they stay in and they actually buy it, you do give them the credit then. One, yeah, that we point. do give them a credit, but it's a handshake that I'm going to give them a credit. So if they give me $10,000 and they mm-hmm. actually, because we go from a, a an option agreement, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and when they get ready to actually purchase, we just got a text this morning. What did Emma say? We just yeah. got a text this morning. I was going to say, don't forget to mention that, because Bill, is this really real? You got a text this morning from somebody that wants to buy one of your subject to deals. And what are they asking for? They're, uh, asking, they're asking for a purchase and sales agreement. Yeah. So what that means is I have a subject to property. Mm-hmm. They've been in there probably a year and a half. They went and got their mortgage approval, and now they want to go to closing. So the first thing I need to do is I need to write them a purchase and sales contract, mm-hmm. which is the next step from an option that clarifies that they're paying this much money, and here's the depo- here's the deposit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take – the right, so they gave me ten grand. Yep, that was the right to purchase the property. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take that ten thousand dollars and I'm going to put it on a purchase and sales pro- uh, contract, saying that they gave me that money and it's going to be applied towards their down payment. Yeah, now it is because they're performing. Until I write the purchase and sales contract, it's not a deposit on the house. It's yeah. the rights to own the house. Yes. Okay. So I want to make sure this is clear because I, I well, think- that's important because. If they don't buy the house and the two years comes up and you're not happy with the arrangement, they have to leave. Right. And you get and they somebody. they lose the rights. Yeah. And I that's get their why. money. That's why. Then that's why. Because right. they're not going to stay there forever. They either pull the trigger or not. If they leave, you keep the money for your aggravation and your work. Correct. And then someone else does the same thing. Okay. Now, if they perform, let's go back they get to the, the subject to deal. Yeah. Yeah. The only place they get their money is at the closing. Yeah. Which right. is fine. You perform. Which you is, get, you know. They perform. Now, let's go back to the subject to deal. Okay. Yeah. They give me $10,000 for an option or the rights to buy this property. Yep. Okay? Yep. That $10,000 or a portion thereof should go in an escrow account Mm. 
so that if, excuse me, if they don't pay, if your buyers don't pay, you can continue to pay the mortgage. Right. They're still in the house. They haven't left. They kind of screw up. Yeah. So you have money, and I prefer to have six months worth mm-hmm. of rent mm. or mortgage payments mm-hmm. and some eviction, I mean, some uh, foreclosure money or mm-hmm. eviction money. Yeah. <coughs> right. Sure. <coughs> so I can evict for around 600 bucks. Yeah. So if I've got a $1,000 a month payment, I'm going to want to have $6,600 in escrow. Because it can take that long? Because it could take, in Connecticut, yeah, well, we're a liberal state. These, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get me started on that. <laughs> what I mean by liberal, I mean that the tenants have more rights than we do. That still doesn't make, never makes sense to me because the guys who make the laws, I think we yeah. make them better for us. So that means I'm going to want to have six months at $1,000 so I can continue to make the mortgage payment mm. and not default. Mm-hmm. And have the six hundred dollars for the for the eviction. Sure, Pay so sixty six hundred. Now, hear me, hear me loud and clear. Your first deal that seems like a lot of money. So, so your first deal, you're only going to take what thirty thirty three thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. You're not going to keep the whole ten grand. Mm-hmm. Okay, what you should do. But as you proceed through life and do what I'm talking about, because I'm telling you, these subject to deals are everywhere. Okay. You put that sixty six hundred dollars into the into the into the till. Then you do another one and you put seven grand in there. And then mm-hmm. you do another one and you put five grand in there. Mm-hmm. What you're gonna find is is once you get three or four houses, not all of them are gonna default. So once you get, you know, you you get, you know, twenty five grand, thirty grand into an escrow account, you could not put as much money in there after a while. Yeah, the, it, it, the chances that all that it's not gonna happen. So you so you're a bank yourself. we talked about this with the creature from Jekyll Island. Yeah. A bank relies on the the research of a bank is is that about ten percent of the of the deposits gets you know people come in and take them back out. Yeah. So it's probably the same with real estate. It's mm-hmm. like about ten percent will default. So so you know if you've got you know whatever number in your portfolio, I don't have the math in front of me to do that, but you understand. What well, I'm if you had ten houses, you kind of only need to cover one of those but to be right. safe or cover at least two three four of them right and don't worry about it because you know you're only going to screw up a little no, bit that doesn't there. mean you shouldn't put any money but instead of putting 6600 maybe you put three grand in yeah you know what i mean or four grand you'll you'll figure that out yourself yeah but the point is is once you get going you have a cushion now this is where when you go especially on bigger pockets and you hear that you know these guys right on there that you know newbies you know under 30 year old people they buy these houses and then they get in trouble and then they can't pay the bill Mm-hmm. Okay. The only thing that's going to create any trouble for you in a subject to deal, the only thing, the only thing that's going to be a problem for you is if you don't pay, make the monthly payments to the bank. Right. And they don't care what check, what name is on the check. Mm-hmm. They just process the payments. Yep. Okay. So is that all that clear? Because I want to move on. Yeah. Especially because we're probably an hour in, right? Yeah. Okay. So now let's let we're going to be a little bit longer here because this is an important subject. You've been okay. on the last page for half an hour. Yeah. Now let's get <laughs> into some of the noise and objections that I hear. Okay. Okay. So let, let's get into those. Sure. Okay. So let's talk about the one we were just talking about, so we can work with that first. So yeah, the check being in your name. Uh huh. Okay. To the so, bank. Yeah. So many people worry about that. Mm-hmm. The bank cashes the checks. They don't. They don't look at the name of the check and match it to the loan. No, it's a it's a clerk too. It's not like the president looking like checking. You know, uh, it's protecting a pay, his, It's a payment center. They don't yeah. have. It's not like they take your folder out, look at the note name, and then put the put the receipts in the folder. It's not electronically. There's a person that just processes checks all day long with account numbers. Yeah, it's they, paid. They don't, Beside that, it's paid. Yeah, they got their money. They can complain they got their money. Yeah. Second thing is, is that what you will do, which is one of the six documents that I'm talking about, what you're going to do in the very beginning is you are going to actually provide the bank. Mm. You're going to call them up and say, mm-hmm. look, we're doing, we built a trust. We're doing estate planning. You don't have to say that if you want, but mm-hmm. we're, we're do, we built a trust with your lender. And from now on, this trustee, Peter, yeah. is the trustee. And he is going to control the money, and he is the one that you need to have correspondence with. Right. So you need to provide two of the documents that I'm going to give you if you get the documents. You provide two of those documents that your seller signed, 
mm-hmm. which, by the way, will have their social security number on it and some some confidential information. So you're mm-hmm. going to get that information. Mm-hmm. You're going to provide that to the bank. Right. And I did this on the house we did last year. Yeah. I was a trustee. I called the bank and said, I'm the trustee on this house now. And we'll be making the payments. They go, okay, that's fine. Can you send me this? Can you send me that? I need this. You give it to them. They go, thank you, and hang up. Right. So now that's once it. you do that, once you have become uh, uh, one of the people they can correspond with, mm-hmm. the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to change the address of the mail. Mm-hmm. So now all the mail comes to your address, not to your seller's address. Right. Because you don't want to rely on your seller getting important mail and not telling you and then all of a sudden you're in some problem that you didn't know about Mm -hmm. you know like whatever whatever but you want to get you know because there's things like which we're going to talk about like the insurance you know and taxes and you know like i just got a letter from the girl that just texted me this morning i got a letter from uh from the city the taxes went up so i i had upper payment Oh. It was like, I don't know, $400 a year or something. It wasn't much. It was like $60 a month or $30 mm-hmm. a month, whatever it was. The tax yeah. went up. Yeah. But what happened If you is, don't know that, it's a big deal. But I don't know <laughs> yeah. that because the, 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 the mortgage company pays the taxes. So I don't get a tax bill per se. I mean, I guess, I, I guess they do. I don't know. The point yeah. is, is that, that, uh, as we just found out in the closing we did yesterday, taxes are funny because sometimes they're paid in the front, sometimes they're paid in the back. But the bank's got to figure it out. So they'll make the adjustment and send you a letter. You want to make sure you get a letter like that. That's yeah. what my point is. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So so once you send them these two documents, then you get on the account as someone to, to, that's going to communicate with or correspond with. Mm-hmm. You get the mail sent to you, and then you can control. Now, the only thing that they will not change in the bank is the lender's name on the documents. So you're not changing that. No. No, that's the whole point. It's their mortgage. It's right. their loan. Right. And you're leaving all that alone, the right. loan. Good. So now let's, let's so that, so does that make sense? Yeah. Now, now let's cover the big pink elephant in the room, okay? The one like, why would anybody in their right mind do this? No. There's another one. <laughs> due on sale clause. Yeah. Well, you'll trigger the due on sale clause. So what that means is every mortgage has in its documents that if you pass the deed, the bank has the right to call the loan in. Mm-hmm. That's a due on sale clause. Yeah, like you're selling it to somebody else. Right. They just lost their collateral. Right. They think, so wait, wait that's my collateral. Pay me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or lost right. their rights. Yeah. Okay. There's nothing to talk about that because just what I just explained with the trusts, mm-hmm. it doesn't trigger the due on sale clause. No. And that's the magic of why we and do it. So if you put the house into a trust, it looks like you're doing estate planning to the bank mm-hmm. and it doesn't trigger the due on sale clause. Never happened to me yet. There's a No, I did that one. And believe me, I was a little nervous doing it because it, it feels weird. Right. Honestly, it does feel weird. Right. And you've never done it before. And you, I'm the trustee. I've never been a trustee before. Right. But you're talking to like a, a clerk or somebody in the bank. It's not like right. the president, Scott, you know, it's not uh, Scrooge watching his his property. Right. They say, thank you very much. What's the numbers? What's the documentation? Da, da, da. What's the address? You say, thank you very much. They hang up and they go on to the go to lunch. Right. And it's done. So there's not there's not much to handle there. No. Other than because I did all the all the prep work prior to getting to the question because I explained trusts. Yeah. So the reason why the due on sale clause doesn't trigger is because we're putting in a trust. I'm gonna tell you again, the people that are on bigger pockets and a few other places I was in, they don't understand that. Mm. And especially if they don't understand land trusts, they are not gonna understand that. Mm-hmm. So this is an education that you need to get and you need to get a little bit more education than just this podcast. Yeah. Okay, so uh, AKA my coaching. This is what I do with my coaching clients. Right. I mean, this week alone, this week alone, I didn't add it up. Let me, th- let me add it up for a second. 400. I think this week alone, we closed on uh, almost a million dollars with houses. Your students. Yeah. The coaching clients. Yeah, and they're all creative nice. financing. None nice. of them were banks. None of them were yeah. private lenders. They were, they were owner finance deals. Yeah. Well, we bought our own this week. Yep. Not a dime into it of our own money. Yep. And still great cash flow coming out. We took out. money out. Yeah. We took, we took I mean, like $3,000 out. Yeah. And plus the cash flow every month that's going to be coming. Which is $1,000 a month. Yeah. With no money in of our own. Right. Fully financed. So. <clears throat> okay. And equity in a principal well, increase. Let's handle the other one. Yes. What'd you say? Who in their right mind would do this? Leave the mortgage in their name. So here's what I explained to my seller. Mm-hmm. So I tell them. That if I don't, so so 
so let's role play it. Yeah. So Peter, so, so Peter, what are you worried about? You worried well, about if I don't make the ha- payment? I, I I have the mortgage. You have the house. Right. So what if? How do I know you're going to pay it? Okay, that's a good question. Right? If you don't pay it, then what happens? Right. So here's what does happen. If I don't pay the mortgage, first of all, I'm going to change all the mail and everything to come to my house. So I'm going to be notified first. Hmm. Okay. But let's just say that I'm crashing and burning, which hasn't happened in 16 years, but let's just say that's going to happen. Okay. What happens is, is the bank, after three payments, will start foreclosure proceedings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most people don't know this, but the first thing the bank does is they go do a title search. Mm. What they're looking for are things like, are there more than just the mortgage problem because they're taking the perspective if you're not paying the mortgage you're probably not what else are you paying taxes you're probably not paying the water you're and there could be like irs liens there could be you know mechanical liens Mm -hmm. they they, they already know you're in trouble if you're not paying them two or three months right they know you own the house right so they're looking for that other stuff so now they're there doing like a uh uh uh, an inspection or an, an interrogation on what else have you done yeah okay when they do the title search, what's going to happen is, is they're going to find out that my name is on the title and your name is on the mortgage. Mm-hmm. So now when they present the lawsuit, because they're going to be the plaintiff, right, yeah. and we're going to be the defendant. And they always sue on a foreclosure. It's nothing right. weird or like, oh, no, they're for- no, it's just, it's just standard that, proceeding. That's just how they, it's just a legal way to because do that. Because they've done the title search- they're going to realize that my name's on the deed and your name's on a loan, so the defendants are going to be you and me. Mm-hmm. And here's the reason why I know this, because I did one of these deals, and I remember uh, I sold the house. Uh, they People were in this house. It was up in Wallingford on, in the Ridges. I sold this house. The people were in the house, I think, 16 or 17 months, 15 months, something like that, and they went and got a mortgage. Mm-hmm. We closed. I made, I don't know, I think it was thirteen or 15000 Mm -hmm. at the closing Mm -hmm. okay we closed on the deal now at the time i owned a gas station and my office was in the back of the gas station my real estate office was in the back of this complex right so i come walking in one morning and some guy says to me are you william hawthorne i'm like yeah he goes here and he serves me paper i'm like who the hell's suing me so i open up the documents and it was this property Mm -hmm. the one you sold the one that i sold well i didn't know that when i took it when i took it i was i was like what is this because we had a bunch of property so i go into the filing cabinets i pull the file out i'm like we sold this property you didn't remember that you sold it you had not not right off the bat oh that's cool why is that important well no it's just cool that you have so many yeah i just (laughs) didn't i didn't remember so i pulled i pulled the deal jacket out anyways long story short you guys have heard me tell this story the attorney that we had at the time had a $140,000 payoff, didn't pay the mortgage. He, oh, he, 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 he got, got the money. Oh, the, yeah, the 140 payoff was on the house. He got it. Three months later, <laughs> he hadn't paid off the property. He didn't pay the bank. Mm-hmm. Uh, so ouch. he was floating the money. And no one else notices things like that? Like, Well, they, they were, I don't know why we were not getting mail sent to my, to me. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. I don't get it. To this day, I don't get it. Jeez. Okay. Bottom line is, is obviously the attorney was, was in, in, he, we, let, we left him. Yeah. He, he actually had the audacity to call and yell and scream at me and tell me that there was $6,000 in fees that he had to pay and he was expecting me to pay it because he didn't pay the mortgage. You <laughs> believe that? Oh, yeah. because it, after the fact. Yeah. You have to pay my, my late. <laughs> the point in the story is, is that old. I learned at that point. That's when I learned this because this was early on in my career. I learned that when the bank does a foreclosure proceeding, they sweep the title. In other words, they could do a title search and all the defendants are named in a lawsuit. Yeah. So this this lawsuit that I was getting was not only my name, but it was my seller's name. So the first thing I did was get on the phone with the seller and say, you're not going to believe this story. But the house was sold. Mm. And here's what happened. Mm. And they were totally cool after that, okay? Yeah. Point is, is that I usually have more properties than you do. Mm -hmm. So if I don't pay and we go into foreclosure proceeding, where do you think the court's going to go? The guy with the deeper pockets, right? Yeah. So I think I have more to protect than you. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But you'll pay the mortgage. If I don't, I lose more than just your house usually. Mm. 
Because they're going to dig you, and they're going to find out I have so, other properties. I'm still so. role-playing. So if you don't pay the mortgage, I get the house back. You could. Right? I have to yeah. sue you, get the house back? No, you don't have to sue me. I just take it back? You, 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 yeah, that would be the worst case scenario. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you that if I have a problem and I want to give you the house back, I'm going to just deed it back to you. I'm not going to be, I'm not living in the house. So I'm not going to drag out a foreclosure proceeding or anything like that. I'm just going to give you the house back because I have multiple houses. And if I don't want your house, I just give it back. It's going to be for a reason. Yep. Which, by the way, I've only done that once in 16 years. Mm. Okay. And I made a deal with the woman. Actually, I'm sorry. I did it twice. Mm. I did it twice. Because mm-hmm. another house I did, I did one in Naugatuck. And, and, the, and the guy that was living in it spent $35,000 in the basement. And my owner was glad to get the house back because he completely renovated the house. So I took a $150,000 house and turned it into a $200,000 house. He was glad to have it back because he sold it mm. and made money because my tenant walked away from it and He's walked away. didn't get his money. Could away. you have kept it if you wanted? Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't want to at the time. I forgot what the situation yeah. was. But you have to realize that my partner was much older than I was. You know, he was in his 70s and I was, you know, in my 40s. Yeah. You know, so, you know, there was a big difference there. And and, mm-hmm. and towards the end, he wanted cash, not these deals. Yeah. So the point that I'm trying to make here, so I end a role play. So the point I'm trying to make here is when you start explaining to them how the how it actually works with details, mm-hmm. they tend to be a little bit more comfortable. All right. I also think there's a, there's a point that you have to realize that when people do this, they don't have much equity in the house anyways, do they? We got 20%. Yeah, you, yeah, but if they were to sell it, it would cost them twelve to fifteen with fees and all that. They would they would wind up with not much anyways. Right. So they're not really losing anything. Right. And if the mortgage goes on for twenty years, they didn't weren't going to get any money anyways. They had no equity on sale with a uh, real. So think about that. what you're saying there. So if 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 I were to if if I were to foreclose, which is another another objection handling that I do. So if I were to foreclose, say I didn't, I made payments for a year. Yeah. And they and the bank wanted to foreclose on me. Mm. Well, first of all, you could take the house back and resell it. Mm-hmm. But in that year's time, I've given you a principal reduction because I've paid those mortgage payments down, and you got a principal reduction. So before you owed one hundred and sixty, now you owe like one forty, yeah. or whatever the number is. Yeah. So has more equity. He'll yeah. make more when he sells it. Yeah. And you know the thing you have to remember is people that do these things are not doing fabulous. They have some issues. They have right. some problems. They're motivated. They have something they're trying to deal with. So they have to do something that may be so a little I wanna, bit of trouble I wanna, for them. I want to clarify that because I, I don't I don't agree with you. Mm-hmm. So a majority of people think this is only happening to desperate people. No, not desperate. So they think that they have to do these in foreclosures and people have nothing to lose, just what you're saying, mm-hmm. which is not the case. Mm-hmm. Let me give you a classic deal structure. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, let me let me make this statement. Okay, this is why I haven't done subject two because it's so much to cover. We could do a whole day seminar just on this. Mm. Okay. The only time you do a subject two deal, let's talk about that. There's a specific reason to do a subject two deal. From our perspective as buyers. Yep. Okay. Because you have to put money into the house significant money into the house and you need to protect yourself by the deed. Mm. Like if you need to do some renovating or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. You need to pay off a second mortgage. You need to give your your, your tenant, you, you need to give your seller money to walk. Yeah, if he has a little <coughs> bit more equity, so give him right. five, 10, 20 if you have to. So <coughs> often what I'll do is get a $200,000 house, 80% is 160. Mm-hmm. Suppose it needs five thousand dollars worth of repairs, and you're and you want to give your your tenant, I mean your seller, ten thousand dollars. Mm. He owes one twenty, so you're paying one thirty five. Mm-hmm. Now watch this. Are you with me? Wait a minute. He owed how much? One twenty. Oh, okay. So the one sixty is you're like you give him ten grand to walk. Yeah. And you're going to give him five thousand. You need five thousand dollars for repairs. Okay. So in this particular case, the way I would structure that deal is I would. Take over the mortgage payments of the one twenty. Mm-hmm. I'd write him a note, no interest, no payments for the ten grand. Mm-hmm. He gets that money when I sell. Mm-hmm. Now the only money I got to come out of my pocket is five grand. Right. So the fact that I'm putting five grand in for the renovations means I want the deed in my name to protect my five grand. Oh sure. You don't do that on a rental, a lease. I don't need to go get private money because I don't need. I mean, I could get private money on the five grand. Mm-hmm. I could borrow that from somebody's credit card. I could borrow that from somebody's IRA. I could borrow that from whatever mm-hmm. and be third position. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could do that. 
often you can get a zero. I mean, pretty much anybody can get a credit card. Mm -hmm. If not, you can find five grand. Okay. Yeah. So, so the point is, and if you can't and you're in that much trouble, then this is not the type of deal you should be doing. You should be doing slot deals. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the point is, is you, you get the five grand, you go do the renovations, you do whatever you got to do. And now you own the house. So now you own the house for $135,000. It's a pretty house. You're going to sell it on. So when we talk about selling properties, if the house, if our after renovated value is 200000 okay, you paid one thirty five. Mm -hmm. you don't have to sell for 200000 You can get 5 to 10% above market value because of a lease option. So you can sell the house for two hundred nine, two hundred nine. Because the people that are buying it on a lease option, we'll pay are not, uh, yeah, they'll just, just pay it because they're in a bit of a pickle. No, because they have to pay on terms. Yeah. They're not in a pickle. They just chose to use terms. Mm. It's not It's not discrimination where we're taking advantage of somebody that can't pay. Mm. It's they chose to use terms. Mm -hmm. That's why they're paying that money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the yeah. point is, is that you could give deposit money. You can give money, but just give it in a second note. Right, mm -hmm. so if there's enough room, there's there's enough room for them to get a note. Mm. Right, so you just write a second. So you take over the mortgage payment. You you, you draft up a, a note, mm -hmm. right, which is part of my documents. If you pay the few thousand dollars for my documents form, all that's in there. Yeah. Okay. You draft up a note, and you go file it. Mm -hmm. Done. It's in second position. Mm -hmm. So now when you sell, they're protected. They're going to get their ten grand. And yeah, I explain that because it's fi it's filed. So yeah. if somebody wants, they look at the deed. They say, "Hey, you, you owe money to this guy," mm -hmm. so I have to pay him. So you would, you could, if your buyer, if your seller is that uh, worried about it, you provide them with the uh, recorded note document, mm. right? Yeah. So, so it shows they, he's protected. So it shows he's protected. Good. Okay. Wow. Well. All right. How about insurance? That's another big question. It's so, just, so oh. what will happen is, is because uh, most people are living in their house. They have regular homeowners insurance, mm -hmm. so you should change it to a landlord policy. Right. So if the insurance is covered in the payments as an escrow, in other words, they're taking the money out and they pay the insurance as needed. Yeah. Uh, what you need to do is you just need to, because you have uh, documents now to be able to talk to the mortgage company, you just call them up and say, I have a new insurance company. And the and the mortgage company is listed as a lost payee, and there's a declaration page which has mm -hmm. all that all that documents in it. Mm -hmm. You send that to the insurance company, and you say, "Here's my new payment," and they'll change they'll adjust your 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 PITI payment, your principal interest taxes insurance. Payment. Does it say it's a landlord insurance policy? I just said that. Well, the the pol yeah well. So they know there's renters in the place. That's my point. They know there's renters yeah, in the you're, place. You're allowed to rent your house. Why, yeah. why not? Yeah. Nobody says you can't do that. You own the house. You can do whatever you want. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not going to trigger anything. It's just yeah. you're just going to send them the and and I don't think it says that to be honest with you. Mm. I don't think I've ever met, read that anywhere. Yeah. On a on a declaration page, it just shows them that you mm -hmm. just tell them I changed insurance and here's the new payments. Mm -hmm. And it and it's not hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Decided to rent it. Right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the last thing I want to cover. Uh, is this is the very last thing and uh, I'm not going to cover this as extensively as I should because it's a whole nother hour conversation <laughs> or at least a half hour conversation. Tune in next week. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so here's what happened. Here's what happened to me for about 13 or 14 years of my 16 years. And I'm here to tell you that I probably lost... I'm guessing 20 to 30%, we'll say 25% of my subject to deals because of this. Mm. What would happen is, is I would make the deal with the owner in the house and they would agree to everything and they would explain everything to them and then they would go talk to their lawyer mm -hmm. or their attorney or legal counsel or mm -hmm. somebody that thinks they're legal counsel, but they're not. Sometimes a real estate agent thinks that they're legal counsel because mm. they have experience and they'll tell them you're not, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. Okay. Because they wouldn't. Right. Because it's it's very it's widely misunderstood. Mm -hmm. and, and this podcast, you've learned more about how to do subject to than anything I found online. This is not this is completely to me unprecedented. This has not been done before. Mm. Uh, oh, this I Bill. I and, think I got more detail out of this than all the times you've talked about it, or the right. things that I've been in with you doing one. Right. Like you just gave more detail, so I right. actually I'm asking questions. So 
when somebody asks me questions, if I'm on the phone with the bank as a trustee person, I know how to answer better in case it comes up. So I'm just more knowledgeable. I've learned so more if there here. is somebody out there that, that has a podcast, or has, I would love you to send me a, a link in support because I would love to hear it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and I'm really trying to create value because I want reviews. I really want reviews. And I think I've earned them today. Okay. So please go give me a review. Anyways, my point is, is this. If I get any sniff or any scent or any little bit of indication that they are going to go anywhere for advice, mm. here's what I tell them. They don't know the paperwork I'm going to use, okay, until I present it to them. Mm -hmm. Usually these days, I used to bring, I used to carry it with me and do it in the house. These days, the way the world is with skepticism, people don't move that quick. So I usually go home and I draft the paperwork, you know, and I meet them another time. There are times where I will just do the paperwork immediately or I'll come home and go back and do it. But it's not too often. Yeah. Most people understand. So what I do, and this is a little bit strange, but follow me along, okay? If they say yes in the house, I have them sign an option agreement. Mm. We are not going to use an option agreement that's not one of the six documents. It has nothing to do with a subject to deal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing to do so with it. So why do you do it? So that they feel like they've signed something and they're committed. Oh, so, so you don't change it's your mind. psychological. Yeah. So they don't go to this. So now when they go to their opinion leader or their legal counsel or their accountant, they're going to be, well, I signed documents. And they're going to mm -hmm. be like, oh, you better. Uh, but that like <laughs> that puts them at bay. Okay. <laughs> Then I go back with the other six documents, and they sign those, and we notarize them and all that kind of stuff, okay? Often we leave the house, which is best, because now they can't say to me later on, oh, he was in my house, he's a big dude, and I was afraid of him. That's why I signed the documents, because he, I was afraid of what he was going to do. So where do you sign them? So if you leave, if you get them to leave the house. Oh, leave. Okay. I thought you meant le okay. leave with them or meet them somewhere. Yeah, meet them somewhere. Okay. And they leave the house and they come to the attorney's office or they come to, you know, the bank or the city hall or wherever the notary is. You get them to leave the house. You have better chance of them saying, not saying that you held them hostage in their house. and Stormed made them in the doors. Yeah. Wait a minute. So you Never left. Never happened, your, but. But you left your house. Right. You went to this place and he forced you to drive there right. <laughs> by exactly. yourself. Exactly. <laughs> so, so that's just a little side note. Yeah. But what I do, so they don't know what the documents are until you meet them later. Okay. So if there's going to be legal counsel involved, then what I do is I don't do subject to paperwork, the six uh -huh. documents. Yeah. I actually use a wraparound mortgage. Okay, so like a wraparound mortgage means their mortgage is going to stay in place and mm -hmm. the agreement I make with him is going to surround that mortgage. So is it like you have a note directly to him? Yes. And then that note covers his other note, right. pays for the other one. Right. So And it wraps so, around it. So, yeah. So if I, like in the particular deal I was just talking about, if, if, if I was going to do subject to paperwork, I would take over, I would sign the six documents with him. Mm -hmm. for 120 grand mm -hmm. and then I would write a note in second position and file it for 10 grand yeah if I was doing it wrap around the way it would read is is that I'm taking a hundred and thirty thousand dollar mortgage with my seller mm -hmm. but a hundred and twenty thousand of that 130 is with another mortgage company mm -hmm. but I'm gonna pay him. And he's going to pay the mortgage company, which we don't do. We pay the mortgage company directly. Yeah, because what if he doesn't pay it? Right. Yeah, he could screw up the deal. So, The legal beagles understand that a whole lot more than subject to. Just terminology-wise, a wrap around mortgage, because they do those. They do those. They yeah. used to do them a lot more than they do them now. But my, my attorney's like done a bunch of them for other people than me. And he always says, See, oh, we used to do those in the old days. Isn't that amazing, though? Yeah. Just the, I'm learning just uh, in other things you're doing with multifamilies that you have to say the right words right. so people understand you and they don't get tripped up. Right. And it feels like, yeah, that's how we do it. And they, they get uncomfortable real easy, huh? Right. Squeamish. So so I write, uh, so, I, so we go to a closing, an actual closing. Mm. He pat the seller passes me a deed, and I give him a note for 130 grand, mm -hmm. saying, "Here are the terms. I'm going to pay this much money for this much time, and then blah 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 blah. And it's all going to have the underlying mortgage in place, right? Which we call what? Subject to. Yeah. So it's the legal way, or not? I shouldn't say legal way. They're both legal. 
Yeah, be more more familiar. It's it's more uh, amenable or mm. palatable mm. to legal beagles because now they feel like because the first thing they're thinking is is oh if I was this if I was this buyer I would never do this. Yeah, well, that's the problem with this. People wind up in situations whether it's a good one or a bad one. This fits their situation that they it's helpful to right. them. But let, let me finish what I'm saying. So the mm. the lawyer was going to look at this for the seller and say that buyer's nuts. He shouldn't be doing this. You sh- you could do this deal because you got the advantage. Mm-hmm. Meaning that if the buyer, if because the buyer, the, the buyer's lawyer is going to say you shouldn't do this because what happens if you pay the seller the mortgage payment and he doesn't make the part mortgage payment? Now he's going to foreclose and you're stuck in the middle. Mm. Right. Yep. That's what the lawyer's going to think. Both mm-hmm. lawyers are going to think. Mm-hmm. But what you know is you're not going to do that. You're going to make the mortgage payments directly to the bank. So you're not going to have that problem. Right. And if anybody's really worried, can't you have a third party escrow account or a payment yeah, place? You can, yeah, you can you can mail payments in and they can do disbursements for like six or eight bucks a payment. Okay. Right. And I'll, do lawyers oversee that or just a separate kind of company? Yeah, they could. There's companies so, that do that. There's lawyers that do that. So if they really feel uncomfortable, a lawyer could have this you and do the send, payments. You can send your payments to whatever company they choose and then that company can do disbursements. Okay. In other words, they can pay the mortgage and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that sounds pretty safe, that. really. Right. Mm. So, so that that sounds like a lot of moving parts, but I promise you, when you get involved with this, it's not as bad as they sound. Mm. Now, here's my point: once you understand this, and you do literally one or two deals, because it's not that hard. You did one; it was mm-hmm. not that hard. Well, you and guided me through it. Explaining it is a lot more <laughs> than doing it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go back to the beginning. It of takes the show. about as long to do it as it took you to explain it. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, just, I mean, so I said, once you give yourself permission <laughs> to have this powerful yet very misunderstood way of acquiring property, you will soon realize this perceived unpopular strategy will perform miracles for your financial future. Yeah. Because it does. I did in the in the course of about fifteen months when I first when I first started buying houses, mm-hmm. I acquired I think about a million and a half or two million dollars worth of property. Doing just this, mm-hmm. I did nothing else. A few dozen deals, right? So, well, it wasn't even. I mean, my average house was two hundred thousand or two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. So it doesn't take long to get two. It takes what four or five houses to get two million dollars worth of real estate that you're controlling. Well, five is a million. Every five. Yeah. Yeah. So before you wrap up, can you give like a a ballpark synopsis of the money you get now monthly and when it when it when it uh when it sells two, three, four, four five, five years down the road? Right. Can you do that? Yeah. So in this particular for this for this work and this aggravation, what do you get? Yeah, so in this particular deal, it's a two hundred thousand dollar house, okay. Um you bought for one thirty five. Mm-hmm. Right. So money now would be you try to get three to five percent for down payment when you're selling because remember what I said is the way you sell the house is on a lease with an option to buy. Right. The reason why is because you want to get that 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 option consideration money, which is the right to buy the house. So in this case, I would I personally would not sell a two hundred thousand dollar house for less than a ten thousand dollar deposit, which mm-hmm. is five percent down. Mm-hmm. FHA is three to five percent. Mm-hmm. That's a government mortgage. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. You, if you don't have somebody that has three to five percent, now what I have done in the past is I would take seven or eight grand now and made a promissory note for the rest. Like this house, this girl's texting me. And I did that with her, mm-hmm. right? Uh, she paid me, I think, seven thousand or seventy three hundred, and then it was like Christmas time, right? And then she got tax money back. So in like in February, or March, she gave me the rest of the money. Sure. But I, I knew that I made her show me the taxes or made me, sh- you know, give me some evidence that she was going to get that money. I've done that with lawsuits. I've done that with, I had a guy that gave me a $35,000 camper one time. Mm-hmm. I traded it in and got seventeen five. Yeah. Well, you need money or valuables, a car. But I let them go in the house. Yeah. I let them go in the house with a promissory note mm-hmm. of the 30, of the, of the, of the 20, 15 grand, I think is what I gave him credit for. And I ended up getting seventeen five, So I made $2,500. But yeah. And if they that, if they don't do that, they don't do that. Then I have an executable document you could, to go you, to court. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. So right the there. money now is the deposit money. Mm-hmm. Now realize realize this mm-hmm. that that two hundred thousand dollar house I'm going to sell for two ten. Okay. Right. So now I got I'm going to they give me ten thousand if they go to purchase and sales contract I'm going to give them back the ten grand. Mm-hmm. So now I'm at two hundred. They owe me two hundred. 
Right. Okay. The money monthly is going to be the difference between my payments and what they're going to pay me. Right. So let's say that's, uh, you know, let's say, now realize, well, we're not going to go there. So the payment, let's say the payments are, say, 1300 a month. Mm-hmm. Right. Because for them to have a hundred, like would you oh, like the, the mortgage and all the payments on the house, which right. you have to pay for it. So, so, yeah. So let's say it's thirteen hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. So I can get, we'll say sixteen or seventeen hundred. We'll say seventeen hundred a month mm-hmm. to rent the house on on the lease that goes. So with now that. I get four hundred dollars a month positive cash flow. So I got ten grand mm-hmm. when I when I put the people in the house. Mm-hmm. I got four hundred dollars a month positive cash flow. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I have the one thirty five minus the two hundred. Yep. You have so that I've got equity sixty five thousand dollars in equity. Right. Where's do we have a calculator? And um, where's my calculator? <coughs> Please. Thank you. <clears throat> so let's see here. So we have we have sixty five thousand so let me make sure I'm doing my math right. So two hundred thousand. Right, minus mm-hmm. one thirty-five is sixty-five thousand. Yep. Right. Plus, we made we'll say we made uh, four hundred dollars for five years. Mm-hmm. Right. Times sixty months is another twenty-four thousand. Mm-hmm. So we got twenty-four thousand plus sixty-five thousand. Mm-hmm. And the ten. Yep. So that's it says ninety-nine thousand, but I don't think that's right. So sixty five thousand mm-hmm. plus I should have just done it in my head plus twenty four thousand plus ten thousand. Yeah, that's right. Ninety nine thousand. It does. Okay. So so minus I ha- some fees, closing fees, a little bit. Is there any is there any fees when you close? I try to push those off on my buyer as much as I can. Yeah. I mean Maybe a conveyance tax. Yeah. But that's really incredible because usually when you sell a house, there's going to be 10, 15%. Right. Slow, but in this way, you don't even get that, huh? Yeah. No. That's why I'm asking because I, um, I, I, the last one we did, yeah, not, not much came out of it at all. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. So here's the point. Is that worth it? <laughs> in this particular deal structure, I put up $5,000. Mm-hmm. And, and, and a year or two later, I got back 99000 I got 100000 mm-hmm. Where do you go and do that? Yeah. Here's the best. But you part. got that five thousand in the ten within 30, 40, 40 days. That's right. So you're five ahead in a few days. Right. This is this is called like using leverage or debt to make money or whatever. One I was is. talking about last last podcast or two podcasts ago, I was talking about infinity returns. Yeah. That's the reason why. Yeah. Infinity returns because I have like you said, I put up five thousand. Yeah. Thirty days later, I got ten thousand for a down payment, so I t- I got back my five thousand. And you're five ahead. I take the other five. I take the other five and put it in a reserve. Yep. So I don't get any money. I mean, technically, I don't get any money now. I get my money back. Yeah. Right. Which you have but to be you, careful. But you got you your get, money sitting somewhere. Right. And now I get four hundred dollars a month. Now this is interesting. You're talking about this, and I know we're way into the podcast. We're going to end in a couple minutes here. The interesting point of this is that when you're structuring deals, after a while, you're going to realize that you may not want to pri- promise five thousand dollars. Because you know, because what I think of is whenever I have to take money out of my pocket, I wonder how much am I going to get for a deposit because that's where that money is going to come from. Yeah. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be a creative real estate investor and I'm trying to make it so in 30 days or 40 days when I close on this with my buyer, I have infinity returns. In other words, I have no money in the deal. Yeah. So I may want to go borrow that $5,000 from someone and pay it back. So I'm thinking... Okay, so do I pay it back within the next 60 days mm. or do I take it four or five years? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So these are things that are going through my head when I'm making a deal. Sure. When I'm doing the deal structure. It's, it's a little mind-numbing sometimes because you could, you'll could you get a little more if you wait and it'll cost. Yep. And Well, you'll have uh, more now, more later, less right. now, less later. It depends on right now. If, if you're kind of flush, you're pretty good. Yeah, let it roll. Right. Or just pay it back and get more. Right. Depends if you want to get more return right now or a little later, but you can you can play that either way. Yep. But either way, how do you lose? Right. How do you lose doing that? Infinity should, returns, you can't lose. No, I, I mean um, we just bought a property. We borrowed the down payment. <laughs> we're, we're 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 financing the uh, the 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 rest of the eighty percent, and we're making money. And every, so is everybody else. 
Yeah. So are, Nobody's so, losing money. So the guy that, that wrote us the note, and so is the guy that lent us the down payment. He walked away with money. We walk away with money. Yeah. Well, the thing is, how can that happen? Well, there's people renting the property. They're paying to have a place to live. This right. is a service. Right. And it's a, it's a fine, it's a decent place, and it's a decent amount of money. They're, they, they didn't even know what happened yet. Right. All right, good. So we're over and out. Uh, so what's going to happen is is uh, I'm going to have questions. So you uh, go to FlippingHousesForRookies.com, right top right-hand corner. There's a, a button there that says Contact Us. That goes to Support Tickets right to me. I will try to answer your questions, although subject to is very hard. They're usually long-winded answers, which is why this podcast ran, what are we, an hour and 38 minutes. Ouch. Yeah. That's well, by like, like, a, like, like. Yeah. Uh, and, and I apologize for the length of it, but I, I think it's well worth it because at this point, I don't have to go explain it to everybody now. I just tell them to go listen to the podcast. Right. So the first thing, if you have a question, listen to it again. Yeah, exactly. But I wanted to ask you at the end how much you make out of because that, that hour and 38 minutes and these step, 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 right. step, look what that can produce. If you want the paperwork that I'm talking about, you need at this particular point, send me a support ticket. It is a few thousand dollars, so don't send me a support ticket if you think it's going to be a hundred bucks or something. Mm -hmm. I mean... Just one, just the deed alone, just the deed alone is worth three or four grand. Yeah. That's how much it cost me to make it. Well, you pay a lot of money with lawyers to get these yeah. things refined. Your wording, his wording, I mean, the document. I bought yeah. some documents from guys, you know, and, and I made my own documents, you know, so it's like it's 16 years of accumulating information and making tweaks to these documents yeah. that, that have kept me out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Are these good in every state? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even Texas. Good. All right. So if you if you're curious about the documents, go to flippinghousesforrookies.com. Send me a support ticket. Uh, also, please, 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 please give me a review. And we won't be here next week. And and if I don't get it, honestly, if I don't get enough reviews for what I just did, I mean, what I just did was priceless. I don't know. I, I've been we've been to Ron Legrand seminars. I've paid five thousand dollars for a Ron Legrand seminar and not got one. I just gave. You. Okay. So. This is very unique, so please give us reviews. Um, and then the last thing I would like to say is, what did I want to say? Oh, some of this stuff is covered in the how to buy how to buy real estate without a loan. Mm -hmm. Not all of it, but some of it's covered. You could actually do a deal if you went into how to buy real estate without a loan, and that's five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So uh, not not a hundred percent of what we're talking about, but it's enough for you to fumble around and figure it out. So between that and this podcast, how's yeah, that? Yeah. That pretty well covered it? Yeah, you could do that. And so the, if you want a shortcut and just get the subject to documents and not all the other documents I have, you could shortcut it by doing that. Because those or, are there? Yeah, or becoming a coaching client, which is flippinghousesforrookies.com, uh, and just go to courses and fill out, go to the coaching page and fill out an application, and I will personally call you and we'll talk about whether or not you could be a coaching client. Because mm -hmm. I don't just take anybody. I take. I, I mean, if somebody's going to do a subject two deal, it's worth paying me a few months worth of coaching just to walk them through the deals. Because I, I just have such a vast experience with them mm -hmm. uh, that it's just worth it. Well, if, thirty more seconds. Your choices are figured out by yourself. Good luck. Um, buy tens of thousands of dollars of courses, going to seminars. <laughs> Bill's done already. And yep. We still do some of that. We spend less now. I think we're. I don't know. We, we do it in chunks. Or or um, or get the coaching and have somebody actually guide you through it because I tell you people tell us hand. all the time. I hold your I hand. bought the courses, I got the books, but I'm not sure how to do it because yep. you got a bunch of courses and papers that you're looking at. I up. mean, I had two phone calls yesterday with coaching clients, and I only talk about it because it was yesterday. You know me. If it was yeah. a week ago, I'm in the car. And the phone's ringing. I can't even talk to you in the car. So so I have a I have a coaching client that's that's buying a four hundred fifty thousand dollar piece of property on owner financing, and I've had at least four phone calls, and she's pretty sharp. I got another coaching client that has a uh, that has a, a piece of property that he I just told you he's worth three sixty, and needs about fifteen thousand dollars worth of work, and he can he talked to the lady, who has a nephew that's a partner in the house, and because of what he and I did together, we structured the deal. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. He's paying two hundred thousand. It's worth three sixty. The student is. Okay. He's paying two hundred thousand. Yeah. It's worth three sixty. Mm. The lady has offered to lend him because it's it's a split deal because this nephew wants half the money. So hundred goes to the nephew, yeah. hundred goes to the to the to the grandmother. Yeah. Okay. 
she's agreed to pay the nephew the hundred thousand dollars and give my student a loan for the hundred grand. Mm. So he's out of the picture, and yep. he's just dealing with her now. And she, and and we pay her directly hmm. on a loan that we structured. And I got to tell you, just doing the purchase and sales contract alone, what he paid me for the year was worth just that conversation. Yeah. Because <clears throat> of the way we structured it. That's deal. that's a strange one. You can restructure the structures. Yep. And that was a conversation I've talked to him three or four times, and he's done an amazing job of the lady's extremely excited. She's very happy because she she had this house that her her, her daughter died, mm. and she's got this house, and the nephew's involved, and she doesn't like the nephew. So my, my guy has done like a divorce. He talks to the nephew, mm. talks to her, and he put the deal together. And it was, and he would, there's no way I'm completely bragging, but there's no way he would have done it without me. No, that's complicated. So the lady's happy. The nephew's got his money. Yeah. He's happy. My student's happy. And when he finds a buyer and, and, and he's going to sell the house on a lease with an option and, and he not only has money now, but he's got money monthly and a bunch of equity in the back. That's awesome. I'm That's done, it, Peter. I'm Go done give asking me a review. questions. I'm done asking Go give questions. me a review. Go to flippinghousesforrookies.com forward slash podcast. Over and out. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to flippinghouses.club for some cutting edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at flippinghouses.club.